we're off. So who goes? I, I say something first, or you say something uh, first? Anyone could say anything. Welcome! Right. We're <laughs> live in the galley with Steve Ramp from Abandoned Ship. I got my main man, Nick Balls, running a little producer station over there. How you doing? Hope everyone's doing well out there. <laughs> Uh, today we're going to be making some Brooklyn Bowl fried chicken. If anyone's been to Brooklyn Bowl, located in the wonderful city of New York, then you know that their fried chicken is the best you could get north of the Mason-Dixon line. It's real life. Yeah. Nick, are you on screen too? I can't see the screen. I am on screen. If you want to see the screen, I can put it up for a little you bit. You can put the screen up there. I'm just going to look at myself the whole time. So this is me looking at the camera. This is me looking up there. <laughs> So I guess, should I just get started? Just jump right in? or Yeah, you could jump right in. I mean, let's see how many or Do we want to dick around for a little we, bit, let some people get into the stream? We got we got a couple of viewers Yeah, a couple there. people. How you doing out there in internet land, everybody? Hey, Foggy, how you doing? Thanks for joining us. If you're with us, give us a hello. Let us know you're alive. Is anyone actually going to be cooking with Steve? That's, that's, that's the big one. I don't know. I don't know if we pushed it far enough in advance. But I think I think we did. You watch it now. You know how to cook later. It's you know, true. know how to cook it's later. True. That's fine. You need time to but go now buy it's gonna be in real time, so you can cook along if you wish. If you have yep. all the stuff. Oh. So I'll get started. Yeah, heck yeah. You're gonna clean off the chicken here. You wanna get a, you wanna get some chicken cleaning music going? Yeah, oh yes. We're gonna play some tunes from uh we got nice, Marcus King going. Yeah, Marcus King and George Porter Jr. sitting in with so with uh, you see, they just said it. Yeah, with Soul Live for their Bowl Live run at Brooklyn Bowl. Was this 2017? Yes. This is going. I had to work during this show. That was some bullshit. Oh, so I'm gonna move on over to the sink here. I'm gonna clean off some chicken. I'm gonna get started by brining the chicken, which is essentially just soaking the chicken in a cold salt water bath with some herbs, a little lemon, some honey, things like that in order to maintain the moisture while you're frying the chicken. The process should take about 40 minutes with the preparation and for the amount of time you need the chicken to soak in the solution in the fridge. So today I'm only doing legs and thighs. Those are my favorite pieces of the chicken. And also, I'm only cooking for, you know, three people right now who all like dark meat. The best part about this recipe is it doesn't even have to be chicken. You can bread and fry your cauliflower, your eggplant, your pork chops. You can even chicken fry a steak in this manner and it'll all come out super tasty, super Brooklyn Bowl, very rock and roll. For our brine, you're gonna get your herbs, your seasonings, whatever you want to put in. I like to put bay leaf, a little bit of coriander, whole coriander, some whole black peppercorn, so I'm just going to dump these out of my pepper mill right out the top there. I have a little fresh time. The recipe at the bottom doesn't have time on the brine, but you can you can put anything you want in a brine. You can even do a simple brine if you want, which is just the water and the salt. But I like to, that's not how we do things here. We like to add a little zazz. Some zizzle zazzle. Lemons to go in there. Oh man, wouldn't it be great if I just like first like two minutes into this and I just slice my thumb off? I didn't really think about that being an option. For there is no medical personnel with. on on set right now. All right, we got some lemon in there. We got our dry seasonings, then you can't really measure honey because you pour it into the thing you're measuring it in and then you try and get it all out and it just gets stuck to the side of it. So I just pour some honey in until I feel good about it. Now all of these flavors that I'm adding to the brine now are gonna soak into that chicken 
and you're gonna notice it when you take a bite that all the flavor isn't in the skin anymore. It's soaked into the meat. So Steve, we have our first question. What's uh, up? Shoot. Uh, from Foggy, aren't you supposed to keep time in a bottle? I mean, I usually keep time on my watch. Shit. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about keeping time in a bottle. Go over here now. Where's my? Was that was that a was that a a time joke? Foggy? Was that a time joke? <laughs> keep messaging a bottle. Now, if you're making a lot of chicken. Maybe you do three cups of water. I'm only going to do two cups because I'm not making... Actually, no, that is a lot more chicken than I thought it was going to be. Eh, I'll make more brine than I need just in case. Jim Croce reference. Jim Croce? But was it the guy that, that started McDonald's? <laughs> no, that was, no, that was Ray no. Kroc. That was Ray Kroc. Put the brine on. Put the brine on on a low flame. Oh, that was funny. Just to get, you just want, if you're using brown sugar or honey or whatever you're using as your sweetener, you just want to keep it on a low flame until all of the sugar dissolves. And of course, the most important ingredient, the salt. The ratio you want to do is a quarter cup of salt per four cups, uh, per gallon of water, so, or, right, is that right? Oh, I have it here. I got a third a cup of salt and three cups of water, so do that. It seems like a lot of salt, and it is. Oh, sweet. But we're gonna be cutting down the brine with some ice at the end to cool it off, so that way when we put the chicken in, it doesn't cook in the warm water. So there will actually be twice as much liquid as is in that pot right now. I don't need these anymore. You know, I thought it might have been a reference that I didn't that we didn't get. Time in a bottle, it's a it's a Tim Crotree tune. Uh, yeah. Uh, and so we have a yuff. Yeah, you know, <laughs> directly over our uh, over our heads. Uh, uh, how long are you brining for exactly? Uh, I'm gonna brine it for about 20 to 30 minutes when you're in the process of letting the chicken soak, you can check on it periodically every like 10 or 15 minutes or so. And if the chicken looks like it's starting to get a little white on the outside, or if you squeeze it through the bag, it's gonna be and it starts to get a little too soft or start like the meat's getting mealy, then you're over brining it, you gotta take it out right away. It's gonna make the chicken a little softer, but you don't want it to get too soft because then when you fry it, it's just gonna disintegrate. And then <laughs> Lisa's with us. Hey! How much chicken is too chi too much chicken? How much chicken is too much chicken? I don't know. I usually eat like three or four pieces. <laughs> Depends on how many sides I got going. Yeah, we're not cooking many sides today. Just just the toast. Yeah, you guys you guys make your own make your own sides. I'm gonna make some mac and cheese later, but I'm pretty sure everyone knows how to make a box of mac and box cheese. That would have been a pretty lame cooking show. It's just like, hey everybody, so what you want to do is you want to take this box. You want to read the back of it. <laughs> So we got our salt, our lemons, our honey, coriander, pepper, a little bit of thyme, some bay leaf, going in there. Is that going to be big enough for all this chicken? Let's see. Chicken in a bag. This will be our brining vessel. You can brine in like a big bowl or a big pot, whatever you want to do. Whatever holds chicken. Whatever you want to do. Like I said before, I'll say it again to our newcomers, if you haven't heard, you don't have to do this recipe with chicken. I think you should Brooklyn Bowl deep fry a whole turkey this Thanksgiving. That's what we should do. That'd be a business right there. All right, we got all the chicken in one bag. That's nice. Uh, we are on Long Island. Uh, right now, we're, right now I'm in Brooklyn. But technically, still on the island. Geographically, we're on the island still, but like no one calls it. Yeah, we're not. We're yeah. not a bunch of posers. Yeah. <laughs> All right. 
You want to switch me to the cutting board? Cutting board, let's do it. All right, so we got our brine here. All the salt and the honey is dissolved. It never came up to a boil. You don't need to get it too hot. You really don't want to get it too hot because you're going to want to cool it down. Measuring ice is always fun. The equal amount of ice to however much water you use to make your brine. And then that gives you the proper ratio of salt and water. There's many different brines you can make for all sorts of applications. Like when you brine a turkey, you don't make it that salty because it's going to soak for a couple of days. But if you're doing some pork chops or chicken that you're cooking that night, you can make it extra salty like this. And it's only got to sit for a little bit. If you're not using like a syrup or like any sugar, if you're just doing a simple brine of salt and water and you don't need to soak any of the herbs or anything and you don't need to worry about heating it up, uh, cooking it on the stove, you can just mix the water and the salt. To cool her off. So we got our chicken in a bag. We got our brine over here. It's nice and cooled off. So it's not going to cook the chicken while it's sitting in there. Oh, look at that. I did make enough brine. I thought I made look too much. That. Look at that. There we go. Go in there. I'm gonna get a, I need a big bowl for this. Yeah, I'm gonna get a big bowl. We'll leave this in. I'm not sure why I made this particular um, overlay. Which one? Because you're never, we're never really gonna need it, but. Well, it just keeps me, it keeps me in frame. Yeah. It keeps me in frame. This is actually pretty lazy, so I don't have to do anything now. I just I can switch between these two yeah. and just. And then we got our chicken in a bag in a bowl. Chicken in a bag in a bowl. I'm gonna pop that bad boy in the fridge. What time have we got? What time is 4 it? 4.30, It's 4.30 right? on the dot. That was pretty good. And then we're gonna give it... I'll check on it in 20 minutes and make sure it's not over brining. And then you wanna mix everything around and stuff like that. Cool. Kinda like when you're making pickles, you gotta go shake up the jar every once in a while, you know? Um... If you don't have a deep fryer, but you're going to be deep fat frying with us, then there's a whole process that you should be following. Yeah, well... Where if you take a large, a large, a large, large pot, pot, you know, something like a soup pot. Oh, which can is on right now? All of them? All of them. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah you, take some, you take something like this here, and you're going to fill it up a couple of inches with the oil. And then you could just heat it up on the stove top and use a regular meat thermometer to keep an eye on the temperature. If you have... Oh yeah, do I got one? What do I do? With Kebabs in the air fryer, Hirsch. Okay. And fried shrimp, that makes sense. Oh, okay, okay. I don't know, it's just this is going to have an egg wash on it and stuff. I don't know how that goes. Yeah, that's... that's. I remember um, Jay last night was asking if he could do it in his air fryer and... Yeah, you think it's really just about the level of cleanup that you want to do afterwards. Well, I mean, using a, using a deep frat fryer, is just a fucking bit. it takes me like a half a day to clean it up. So one of, the, one of the secrets of the Brooklyn Bowl fried chicken is they make their house Cajun seasoning. And then as soon as the chicken comes out of the fryer... Oh, bro, needs more. As soon as the chicken comes out of the fryer, they sprinkle it with a very salt-heavy Cajun seasoning. And then the salt and all the seasonings that are on it melt into the oil that's still on the chicken, and then it crystallizes on the top of the, on the, top of the meat there, and it's just... It's a good thing. <laughs> all right, I gotta... I don't even know what my own freaking thing is here. Oh, sorry. 
All right. This is very salt heavy and because I'm brining, I'm gonna go a little bit light. I'm gonna like under measure the salt a little bit just so that way it's not like, you know, it's bad enough for deep frying and then now I'm gonna like, yeah, you know, add a little salt. I was trying to take into account how much salt salty things are going into what I'm making before the dumping a whole bunch of salt. Yeah. It's like, and recipes call for more salt. And I'm like, do you see how much meat and cheese you're putting into this thing already? <laughs> uh, so there's two different types of salt in here. We got your regular, coarse, kosher salt. This recipe here, by the way, is going to make a huge batch of Cajun seasoning, which isn't a bad thing to have lying around your house. So I'm going to go a little bit light on the quarter cup of kosher salt. Really, a quarter cup of paprika. That's a that's a lot of paprika. I haven't had to actually make the Cajun seasoning in a while because we, me and Rachel made a big batch of it like two years ago or whatever, the first time we made this recipe. I am a little light on regular paprika. So when you run out of the seasoning, make sure to add it on the list. So that way you remember to buy it next time. Uh, we do have a question, Steve. What? Um, it's about you. Uh-huh. Um, what, what type of restaurant experience do you have? Or you're mostly at home. I know you, obviously, we know you as a bartender yeah. in our circle as, as the cocktail man. But, I mean, you've, you've always been cooking for me as long as I can remember. Um, so I, I kind of forget if you ever actually worked in a restaurant. Uh, well, I've worked in plenty of restaurants, but always on the bar. I, uh, I was the GM of a place for a little while, but I never actually worked a kitchen line, so I'm a little bit of a poser. I can cook at home, but what those guys do on a kitchen line in a professional kitchen, I'm not, I'm not doing that. That's fucking... That's a fucking hard job, man. Oh, wait, I'm not supposed to curse that much, am I? You can fucking do whatever the fuck oh, you okay, want. Oh, okay, okay, cool. You know, so I, well, I'm not about doing that for a living, because I like to enjoy my cooking. And most of the cooks and really good chefs that I've ever worked with in my day, the uh, the last thing they ever thought about doing once they got home was actually cooking themselves a decent meal. Uh, like I said before, I ran out of regular paprika, so I'm just going to use a boatload of smoked paprika with it, because why the hell not? Sue me. Uh, we need a tablespoon of regular salt. It says sea salt. You just use table salt. That's fine. Now having the two different salts is clever because the thicker salt is going to stay a little more solid on the chicken while the finer salt is what's going to melt right away once you put it on the, the hot oil of chicken. Teaspoon of garlic powder. It's so weird actually measuring things because we're like doing the show now as opposed to you know, just pouring and letting your ancestors say, no, 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 Half a, oh no, it's supposed to be a whole teaspoon of garlic powder. Whoops. Half a teaspoon of onion powder. We need a half a teaspoon of sugar. Just to sweeten things up a bit. And then a tablespoon of black pepper. This one I'm not going to measure because I'm not grinding. I'm not milling into a freaking into a measuring spoon. Oh yeah, that's nice. Kabam. All right. Uh, we gotta work. We gotta work on your uh, catchphrase, dude. Yeah, I know. I need a catchphrase. I was thinking something like. Kablam! Kablam! <laughs> wim wim wham wazzle! What do we think, chat? What, what hasn't been used? You know, think like something something like Emerald-esque. Yeah, like, like don't bite too hard. One, one or two syllables. 
So, Spl- Z, Z's, Spl- your ca- Z's are hard Spl- K's. Sploink. Uh, uh, Sploink? I, I missed the, I missed the, the I. Sploink. Sploink? I think that's like definitely a drop it in the pot type of thing, you know? Sploink. We're gonna take these crabs and we're gonna sploink. We're gonna sploink. I could sploink later. When the chicken goes in the fryer, I'll try a sploink. We might have to wait till we're off stream to try sploinking. I don't know. All right, all right, all right. We got our Cajun seasoning. We got our chicken is brining. We got the oils and the deep fryer. Protein in the pan. Protein in the pan. Sploink. <laughs> Oh my god. Bodoink! Oh, you gotta, definitely gotta wash your hands after you sploink. I think I think that's a health code violation if you don't. <laughs> We're already 15 minutes in. We're 15 minutes into yeah. the brine! We needed a fridge cam. Fridge cam would have been cool. Fridge cam? Honestly, the uh, the clothes cam kind of kind of gets it. Actually, the clothes cam does really get it nice. Look, you're about to open it up right there. That's not that bad. Ah, that is pretty good. Let's mix everything up a little bit. So that way what was on top is now on the bottom. Uh, a <laughs> note about the recipe. Another secret of the Brooklyn Bowl fried chicken is their breading is made with matzo meal, which is literally just matzo crackers. You know, like Jewish crackers, you always get around Passover, the big ones. The, ones, oh, the big yeah, flat yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah. ones that ain't got no yeast in them. They skip that step. Uh, you could actually buy matzo meal in most supermarkets, like already ground up, like in a box. I couldn't do that around here. Believe it or not, in Brooklyn, I couldn't find matzo meal. Really? So I had to take just the big crackers and put them in a food processor. Oh, man. Or you could use like a rolling pin and like smash them up real good. And then you just mix it half and half with flour. But that's okay. one of the, that's one of the tricks right there. And I fry anytime I fry, even if I'm not doing like the Brooklyn roll fried chicken recipe, I use matzo as the. Okay. I use matzo as the bread. It's so good. My dad used to do potato flakes. Potato flakes? Yeah. What's a potato flake? You mean chips? You mean potato were, chips? Yeah. I don't like know. unsalted like potato chips? Just weird. They were it's like it was like flaking, like you know, shaped me from my shelf, kind of looking. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Let's start getting ready to bread some chicken. Another secret that Blue Ribbon does for their chicken. Is they only use egg whites for the wash. They don't use the yellows. They don't use the yolks. Just the egg whites. And they whisk them up real good, nice and fluffy. Oh, am I supposed to mention now at this point that I have no affiliation with Brooklyn Bowl Limited or Blue Ribbon LLC? <laughs> <laughs> Pete Shapiro, if you're watching, um, it's a totally different place. I'm actually saying, I'm actually saying Brookville Bowl. <laughs> Brookville Bowl. Brook, Brookville, Brookville, Illinois. <laughs> That's a place. Uh. I guess since we're running a cooking show, I should do the proper thing and wash my eggs because salmonella is on the outside of the egg. Most people don't know that. But I feel like it's one of those things now where it's, most people used to not know it. And then things like Reddit shower thoughts are like, you know, mildly interesting. He came in, you know, came into, uh, came into the ether. And now everyone knows all those little things, you know? Oh, there's lots of little salmonella off of there. You would think so. You just taught me something. <laughs> Who's that? I said you just taught me something. Oh, you know, yeah, salmonella's on the outside of the egg. That's why I said, like, if you're cooking eggs, you don't crack them on the side of the pan that you're cooking with. Right. You gotta crack them on something separate. Not everyone can see which way my chopping block is tilted right now. There we go. Friggin'. It is five now, so it's been half hour exactly. It's been a half hour on the chicken. All right, so I'm gonna whisk up some eggs here, some egg whites. I don't use all the egg whites at once. We'll save one for later because it's gonna get goopy, and we're gonna have to restart in the breading process later. Go. Yeah. 
I wonder if they're getting, is there the feed that's going out for the music the synced up to ours, or is theirs a hint of ours or something? No, we're at the same time. Oh, would you look at, would you look at that? We are at the same time. Now, you don't need to worry about seasoning the egg or seasoning the your breading mixture because all that's going to get tossed on right at the end once the chicken comes out of the fryer. Plus, don't forget, we're brining the chicken, so you're going to have a lot of flavor in the meat as is. And you don't want to do what Steve always does, which is over-season the hell out of everything. Uh, there have been no splinks yet. Just yep. so the splint counter is still at zero. We haven't splinked. Nick, we're going to need a splint counter. Can I get a splint counter in the corner? Yeah, we got a splint going. We're going to get a splint going. Yeah. And we'll get nice fluffy egg whites there. There we go. Let's check on our chicken. Now you can see, I don't know if you can see on the camera there. I'm trying to see on the preview. You can see some of the some of the pink parts of the meat are starting to get like a a whitish tint to the top, almost like it's kind of like creating like a film or whatever on the top, and that's just a sign that the salt's penetrating through the meat. It's doing what it's got to do, and I'm feeling through the bag the chicken meat is a little bit softer than it was before, so we're ready to clean this off, get this out of the brine, and we're ready to get going. You can start heating up your oil now. And we're gonna, the, the chicken's gonna cook at 360, but when you're working with a deep fryer or if you're working with like a big old pot, you're gonna wanna bring the heat up initially a little higher because once you add the cold chicken, it's gonna bring it down. So we're gonna preheat to 375 here. And then once the chicken hits the oil, we're gonna drop it down to 360. The last step of the brining process is you gotta wash off all that salt water off your chicken there. This might, if you go, if you go through the brining process here, it might screw up your life because now every time you cook any chicken for the rest of your life, you're gonna have to brine it. It's a way of life, really. If you accidentally overcook your chicken, it's still gonna be nice and juicy, but cooked through. When you're doing whole birds or whatever, you don't have to worry about undercooking the inside. Everything's gonna be good. Yeah, you can see some of the some of the meat looks like it's getting a little mealy or grainy on the top, and some of the smaller chunks of meat. So that means your brine has done its job. You can you can remove the skin if you want. I like to keep the skin. The skin's crispy, boys. Some people like to do skinless. I don't know, is it healthier? Skinless chicken? Healthier? I don't know what that means. And like, you know, you get like this, you could have, you know, you have the pieces of skinless, or you got the, you know, the bat wing on there. <laughs> the bat wing? Yeah, the bat wing, bro. Yeah, usually, says her. Oh! Yeah, whipping, oh, we, you missed whipping post, Kate. I'm sorry. Oh, Kate okay, missed the whipping post. It's st we, we started the stream started with Whip and Post. Post. Why you never miss the first song? Gosh, Kate. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. If you haven't given us a follow yet, please do so. We are a full band. We both play in the music band. Um, but Steve's just cooking chicken today, because why not? Um, but we will be having a full band stream pretty soon. And if not from my basement, it'll be live in the field at a real live gig um, that will probably be outside and cold. Uh, <laughs> Is that, that the one that, in, the one in March? Yeah, that gig might end up being cold. I mean, well, it's it's all a luck of the draw. Yeah, in March. Uh, we'll we'll see what happens. That Long Island weather, you know, she, she bites. <laughs> she bites. Oh man. Um, 
but yeah, well, that's, if 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 it's uh, if it's not wet, we'll be we'll be streaming that one. So, um, but I'm also here every Wednesday. Uh, next week we got our buddy Moss on uh, doing one of our listening parties. We're listening to the Flectones uh, and Victor Wooten, uh, two separate albums, and then. Guys, read lips. There we go. That's better. We got it. Yeah, we figured it out. We're back on. All right. That's the quickest I've ever seen like a fuck up get figured out. And it was a power cycle. Power cycle, bro. I'm gonna move this out of the way. We don't need this till the end. Uh, ho! Oh, almost lost an egg to the ground. Harrison, that's exactly what I needed to do. <laughs> what was that? He said, did you turn it off and turn it back on again? That's, that's a fucking note for note, baby. <laughs> uh, all right, so we are ready to bread some chicken. It's the most exciting part. It's also the goopiest part. And I keep fucking tripping on that wheel there. We are gonna get our finished plate. And we've got our egg. Whites only, no yellows. Egg whites only. It's gonna make it nice and fluffy. Whisk that up. Bing, bang, boom. Now we've got our mixture of our breading, which is half matzo meal and half regular old white flour. That's all you need. Like I said before, I'll say it again for our newcomers. You're looking for matzo meal, which could come in a box, a small box, and that's just essentially ground up matzo crackers, the big Jewish crackers that you get for Passover. And if you can't find the box of matzo meal, then you just buy the big crackers themselves and crush them up in a food processor or in, you know, with a rolling pin, you put them in like a big, a big plastic bag or something, in like a Ziploc bag. So I'm gonna dry off our chicken parts here, and we're gonna go egg wash into the flour and matzo meal mixture. And this is gonna be the part where Nick's gonna have to talk a little bit because this is just gonna be me breading chicken. I don't know how entertaining that could be. Just as entertaining as anything that we've done tonight. No, I'm kidding. Um... <laughs> oh, chat, 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 chat. We're fucking things up, chat. Um... <laughs> uh, Bohab James asked what, we're, what are we making and um, Hershen was calling you a racist because you only use uh, white flour and uh, <laughs> egg whites um, and um, white flour and white <laughs> flour white flour <laughs> and, and Bohab said oh damn I didn't know that's how, this is how you made racists <laughs> referring to that's what you're making this evening. I'm making racist. <laughs> so we got some raw racists in the in the first bowl to your uh, right there on the bottom, and then he's dumping it in uh, more racism. It's liquid racism. So what we got here is we've got a can of skull. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> All right, let's back this up. This is we're we're, we're wa walking into some uncharted territories right this now. This is rough. I'm about to get, get canceled. It. Yeah, we are. Jesus Christ! No maga hats here. No mag. No no maggots. Bruh, no no maga. We're here no, for we're here for chicken, not no, politics. No maggots. Ah, oh. let me get that chicken nice and goopy. I'm trying to not use both hands because I always end up using both hands, and then I just end up looking like the like one of those like creatures. Edward both hands. Oh. Edward both hands. <laughs> yeah. Edward no, it'd be Edward Edward batter hands. Oh, whatever, man. Now, some people would say that there's too much excess skin on this thigh, um, but some people also say that cucumbers taste better than pickles, and, you know, you just gotta do your own thing sometimes. I like the skin. You got that matzo meal. I don't know if you guys can see it too up close, but, you know, it's a little, it's a grainy, it's it a grainy good. flour mixture with the matzo meal, and that's gonna make it nice and crispy. The one thing I always noticed about the Brooklyn Bowl fried chicken that always stood out to me was it had like chunks of the breading just protruding off the chicken that were completely fried and solid. And oh man, that's so good. That's so good. This is all good. 
Mm, I like to make sure if you're leaving the skin on to make sure you get some breading under the skin too. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh uh, yeah, you stuffing it with the breading. That's nice. Don't be afraid. Don't fear the breading. Don't fear the breading. All our chickens fried. Oh, look at that meal. Mm. I'm so ready to eat. We mm. still got like an hour. Well, not an hour. 40 minutes. There we got an hour. What do you mean? What, until it's like officially been doing this for too long? No, until we eat. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, the chicken. Each batch of chicken is going to fry for about. 12 to 14 minutes okay. and then i would probably do this in about two or three batches i'll try and do it in two so that way everyone will go watch it if anything i'll do you know the first batch everyone will see the result and then you don't gotta watch me fry two more batches of fucking chicken all right so we got our chicken breaded we've got the deep fryer up to temp now for the best part Boink is on its way. Just a moment, and we will be spoinking. Oh boy! <laughs> Who suggested spoinking? I think it was Axis to Die. Axis to Die is Axis to Die still with us? I hope so. I think I think I couldn't think Access. of anything I prefer to spoink at this point. Spoink might be the word. I think, at least for dropping shit in the pan. I mean, like, there's yeah. nothing better. Did anyone besides Emerald have like a really like uh, uh, onomatopoeia of a catchphrase like that? <sighs> Also, why hasn't anyone thought of a synonym for onomatopoeia? Come the fuck on. Webster's, yeah, right? come on. <laughs> like, for the love of God, everyone's tired of it. There was that episode of Hey Arnold, and everyone's like, all right, we get it. It's a fucking pain in the ass word. <laughs> Yo, our, hey Arnold, I haven't watched that in a minute. Me, right? me and Rachel were talking about it last night, actually. Hey Arnold is the reason why I thought jazz was cool. Like, when I was, like, nine or ten years old, I was like, jazz, like, jazz is, like... It's like a whole new level, well, not a new, but it's like a whole different level of the music we listen to. And jazz is so cool because of Hey Arnold. It was every single cut scene, every single transition sequence is all just some fucking nice bop. Yeah, it's it good is. Stuff. I use some nice fresh clean oh, oil over here. Nick, let's get a. Oh, we got the puppy cam! Is that a Oh, she's such a sweetie pie. <laughs> oh my god. Look at that face. I can't stand it. She's too big. Oh, here's that sugary. Oh yeah, we're, we're coming towards the end of this show. Mm -hmm. We almost made, we're, we might get the beginning of another show. Yeah, we might squeeze something in. Well, there was that other Brooklyn, that other, was it a Soul Life one? It's the day you? after this. Oh. No, 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 it was like 2013 or something like that, I think. Yeah, I can yeah. find that. But anyway, let's get us on the D. Oh, we got the fry cam up. What up, Moss? Let's go, let's go just straight fry cam, because we're about to spoink here, people. Oh, boy, fry cam. Okay, so we got the oil is set to 375. Once I drop the chicken in, I'm going to pull that down to 360 so it doesn't overcook. Uh, Rachel, what time you got on the microwave behind you there? 5.30. 5.30 on the butt. 5.30 on the duck. So I'm going to do thighs to start. Try and start with like pieces. Is that John Mayer? Or is that Marcus King? Marcus King sound that much like John Mayer? God damn. No, it's... Oh, it's Chris. God damn. Oh, fucking... Everybody roast me in the comments for thinking that Eric Krasno sounded like John Mayer for a minute there. Feel free to mention everything. Brody. I've heard that on the internet before. Brody! Okay, there you go. We guys ready? We got one, two, three, four sploinks! No, no, four there sploinks! There go! Sploinkage! And we're sploinking. There we go. Check it down there. I see the temperature is dropping on that bad boy. And we're gonna drop that to 360. Like I said before, everybody's on their own for their own fucking sides. For your own damn sides. Every time I do this, because like, then I get the sides involved, and then I'm doing like nine things at once. I'm gonna screw it all up. So there's no shame. And just pounding some more breading on top there. I personally just love having the matzo flour mixture in its own container in my cabinet. 
to use it for anything. I think we have a few new people here. When I mentioned before, you're using a equal mixture of half matzo meal and half flour, and you can just use it for anything you got to fry. Some cauliflower, some eggplant, some chicken, some pork chops, chicken fried steaks, and it's just, it's a new, it's new revolution. Don't use the, the Progresso Italian breadcrumbs, try the matzo meal flour mixture. I like, you're not thinking, when you think southern fried chicken, the last thing you're thinking about is us Jews, you know, you're not like, oh, let me use some Jewish crackers here, you know? To bread my fried chicken. And we'll just take a little shot, Nick. We got the fry cam up. We do. We got the fry cam up. So just as we're going here, you see the skin shrunk a little bit so they're not touching too much there. You can see those nice chunks of the matzo meal coming up and starting to form a good breading around the skin, or a good fry around the skin. We're in business. We are in business. Mm, 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 mm. Um, just the matzo and the flour, or did you season the flour too? No, I did not. No, so all the seasoning, in case anyone's new here, on the recipe you have a separate area for the Cajun seasoning, which you're going to see here. It's a very salt-heavy seasoning, oh, uh, salt, mostly salt and paprika. I use a good amount of smoked paprika and regular paprika. And right as soon as that chicken comes out of the deep fryer while the oil's still sitting on it and sizzling, you're gonna douse it with this stuff. So all your seasoning's going on on the end. And that's when you're eating that broken bowl fried chicken, that seasoning hits you first. And then in our instance, the flavor of the brine is gonna come through right at the end there. It's gonna be nice. Uh, if you're doing a large batch of fried chicken like we're doing here, you're gonna have to do two or three sploinks into the oil. I like to just set the oven low to like your keep warm setting. I have the shittiest oven in the world in my new apartment here. My landlord cheaped out and just got this little fucking thing. But any boozle. And set yourself up a little tray. A little tray with a rack or you can just get uh, a baking sheet. You can just line it with a paper towel if you want because you're gonna have your oven at like 150 degrees. You're gonna take the chicken out of the oil, lay it on the rack, hit it with the Cajun seasoning, and then just pop it in the oven to keep it warm without overcooking it anymore while you're frying the next batches of chicken. Now, but we don't have to worry about that for a minute. Remember before you fry chicken to clean your stove so that way it looks good for the stream. Oh yeah. So what time we got here? We've been frying for about five minutes now, about seven minutes in. I like to lift it up again and flip it over. If you are using the pot method, if you don't have a deep fat fryer and you don't want to use your air fryer for this and you're just heating up oil in a regular saucepan, a big, or, or I guess a soup pot rather, or something like that. You're gonna wanna rotate the chicken because you may not be able to submerge entirely in the oil. Whatever parts are sticking out, rotate them as you go. I am a glutton for grease, so I own my own deep fat fryer and I cannot recommend getting one your own anymore. That was a Georgie ripped this up, the rip up the sugary man. Oh yeah. Just, you know, you put, put Alan Evans on anything, it's just instantly just fucking jazzy as fuck, man. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I may or may not have a small position in GameStop. Uh, if I manage to make a few bucks off it, I'm buying Alan Evans' symbol set, man. It's, it's so... That's a, that's a goal. Dude, he's, a, he just, he's always rocking. Just a ride, a crash... A big fat fucking crisp. So I guess two rides and, and big fat hi hats. And that's all he ever needs. I hit up your your sweet your sweet water guy. He give me a discount too. Yeah, we can figure that out. He give me a discount if he's watching. If anyone from Sweetwater is watching, sponsor. <laughs> sponsor. Sponsor. Twitch sponsors. I feel like Twitch sponsors are probably just like gaming things. I mean, well, I mean, if we get popular enough as a band, you know, and then we just put the little logo well, yeah. like in the corner and just be like, 
Sweetwater. Delmi gave me the mezcal. <laughs> Shiner Bach. <laughs> Yeah, okay, we're about seven minutes in on that fry there. Look that up. Oh, oh yeah, look at that go. Yeah. Look at that go in there. So as you're going, you see the meat itself is starting to get a little brown. Oh no! I got a little stuck to the back. Oh, no, 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 we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good? Okay. Okay, we're there good. We go. Woo! Oh boy. There she goes! Alright. Oh man, I just love that sound. It's like that big... It's like a big rainfall, you know? When just the sky opens up and it's cold. That's exactly when you drop, when you drop that basket in that fry. I love that sound. Oh, what um Look at those Nick bring up on the camera bring up the bubbles. the full the full spread of all this all the cam or uh, bring up on the screen all the cameras so I can see all cameras where I want to do the where I want to do the sprinkle that's gonna be my zazz zazz my zazz I like yeah. that zazz zazz Splinkin zazz oh actually no okay okay I got it so we're gonna do the zazz. On the on the chopping block, All we're gonna right. zazz on the chopping block. Zazz on the block. We're gonna sploink in the fryer. We're gonna zazz on the block. Sploink in the fryer. Zazz oh. on the block. I got it. Okay, we're about 14 minutes on this chicken here. Look at that. Look at that, baby. Oh wow. Let's get a close up on that. So there you go. There's some chicken there. Check it out both sides, make sure. So you can see your meat has got a nice color to it. The breading is a gorgeous ma like mahogany. This is rich brown. Oh, that's great. That's got a nice toast on it. So what I like to do, like I said before, so you're gonna pop the seasonings on right out of the fryer. So if you take it out of the fryer to check it, you're gonna pop it right back in, just for a second, just to get a fresh coating of oil on it. Transfer over to our baking sheet. While that oil's still sizzling on it, we're gonna bring it over to our Zazz station. Make sure to move your beer out of the way. We're gonna take this salt heavy mixture and we're just gonna go Zazz, 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 Zazz. <laughs> Boom, right on the top there. Put them bad boys over. Oh yeah, look at all that grease that's still on there. What that's going to do is that's going to soak up all of the paprika and the red spices we got going on in here. And the two different types of salt are just going to melt into a fucking a goo of... Oh man, it's just going to be so good. And there, bing, bang, boom. We got the oven is on a very, very, very low setting. Set it a little lower. Up, oh, up, oh, the flame went I'm gonna keep the door open. I'm gonna keep that warm. And now, that's it right there. I'm gonna let that warm up, you know, like sit and well, rather cool off a little bit in the lukewarm oven. We're gonna do a couple more batches here. We're gonna keep shooting the shit. Now, actually, are we on the fry? Let's get the fryer cam going. Fry cam? Let's get the fry cam going. So, what happened before was I put the meat right on the basket, and then when I lowered it in, the breading that was on the meat actually fried to the basket which you gave me that issue before. So if you're using a deep fat fry and you got these nice big pieces here, what you can do is you can lower your basket first and then slowly sort of drape the chicken in. And this is kind of the method you would use if you were frying a much softer meat, like if you're frying some fish. And you want to just get it in there nice and slow. So that way, by the time the bottom of the meat hits the basket, it's already a little cooked so it doesn't get locked in there. I'm gonna toss these legs in the back. Now the legs are a little smaller, so I'm gonna make sure that the legs come out of just a minute or two before the thighs do. If you're doing breasts, believe it or not, the white meat takes a little less time. So even though your breast is getting larger than the thigh, 
it's totally okay to take the breast out at about the same time as the thigh. And if you're doing wings, wings are small, the meat on them, you know, the, the, the bone is much thinner, the meat is easily penetrable. Wings, you only want to do about four or five minutes in the deep fat fryer at, uh, like I said, starting at 375, once the meat goes in lower to 360. And that's just what we got going on over here. What time we got? We got 5.49. So at 56. Well, this is early. This is like Easter dinner with Grandma. God damn. <laughs> we should have started this at like fucking 6, bro. That's Sunday dinner, you know what I mean? Sunday dinner, that's right. And we got to get you out of here. Folks. Yeah, um, I would like to get going before it gets too slick out there. Yeah. Just in case anyone was wondering, I am pretty buzzed. <laughs> I just want everyone to know that I'm having a good time. <laughs> he is having a good time. Dylan, my man, what is up? I was singing that on the way out here because it was on Fish Radio. I'll put it on. I'm going to put it on. Who that? I'm going to go sing. Who that? Oh, boy. It's Dylan. Dylan Gleit? Yeah. Oh, shit. Everybody, we got fucking Hollywood in the fucking Hollywood. Over here. Hollywood. <laughs> hey everybody, in case you're wondering, uh, our boy Dylan Light, him and I were in a band together for a little while. He is now the lead guitarist of a little group, uh, some fucking bunch of hippies some out in Denver called band. Eminence Ensemble. If you've never heard of them or you have heard of them but haven't heard them, definitely check out Eminence Ensemble. They've got a bunch of shit on YouTube, Facebook. Hopefully, they get a Twitch soon. Do some live shit for us. Yeah, that'd be dope. That'd be Dope City, bro! Dope City! Dope City! Oh, whoops, I ended it too early. I'm oh, sorry. no! I didn't mean to, I just wanted to. Did uh, you just ruin people say? Yeah, it was almost over. Oh, you know, God, you ruined people say! I ruined it. But I, I just got so excited. Well, what are you popping on there? <laughs> <laughs> we know. <laughs> Steve, you gotta remember, dude. Oh, uh, bro, I remember the chicken. Gotta remember, bro. Oh shit! Uh. Huh? Can we turn it up on our end a little bit without? Yeah. We're gonna we're speaking of chicken, we're gonna check on our chicken a little bit. Your prediction was right. I shouldn't have turned it up. Oh uh, yeah, oh it's it's echoing for everyone. Yeah, it's echoing. Oh, whoops, whoops. Huh? Chicken. Yeah, yeah, I got a situation. I got a chicken situation. Chicken situation. Chicken situation. Oh uh, yeah, look at that skin bubbling up there. The meat's getting that nice toast to it. So scary. <laughs> as long as it was just the lights and not everything. <laughs> uh, if you're just joining us, so if you're deep fat frying your chicken at about 360 degrees, I'll say it again, you're gonna preheat to 375 and you're gonna drop it to 360 once you spoik your chicken in there. Spoik! And you're gonna want to deep fry for about 12 to 14 minutes with the rotation halfway through. Uh, the legs I'm gonna do for about 12 minutes. The thighs I'm gonna do about 14 minutes. Steve, I missed some spoinks. How many spoinks did you spoink just now? Oh well, we started with four, four spoinks, four spoinks, but four spoinks and seven burbs ago. <laughs> <laughs> but how many more did you spoink after you spoinked? The first uh, so we're up to eight spoinks. Eight spoinks total. Show me eight spoinks. <laughs> I got. Oh, it's over there. It oh, wait, hold. Do you actually have a spoint counter going? I do have a spoint counter. It's right above you. Yeah, it's right. You just, yep. Hold on. Am I, hold, am I raising the spoint You're counter? You're raising the spoint. You are raising the spoint counter right now. Hold on, ready? There you, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> 
Spoil and Zazz. Oh, and oh, you got some Zazz. I got four Zazzes. Yeah, okay. four Zazzes. I would say, you know what, I'm going to go out here. The Spoinks, one Spoink per piece of chicken. So we're up to eight Spoinks. But I say a Zazz, like a Zazz is one Zazz gets all the batch of chicken. Oh, it's... Oh, so I'm going to oh. have to roll the Zazz, the Zazz right. Matron back from a four to a one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's cool. That's cool. I get it. I get it. The whole batch is a Zazz. Mm. But Spoinks are, are individual. Spoinks. Spoinks. That doesn't sound right. I'm gonna say those legs are those, done. Those look great. Oh, is it time for a zazzum? I think we might get a zazz here. And what we're gonna do here is, we're gonna take our boy, our alligator friend here. Remove the pieces that already been zazzed. Like I said before, we're gonna re-dip in the oil just real quick. Oh, you know what happened, Nick? You know what happened here? What had happened, Nick? I don't know when this happened, but it appeared we lost power to the fryer. Ah! That's not good. You don't want that to happen. So just to be on the safe side. I didn't do it. I did it the whole time. We're going to keep this fry going for a minute. I'm going to get my meat thermometer, and we're going to make sure that that chicken is actually cooked through so I don't kill us. I like not dying. Guys, rip it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, so the legs are ready. So, before I was so rudely interrupted by myself, There, we're gonna re-dip in the oil so we get a nice coating. I'm gonna leave the thighs in for just an extra minute or two over the legs. And then now we've got a zazz coming up. We got zazz incoming. Zazz, zazz. I'm still not sure how I want to say it. I don't know, I don't, I, I, that's, that's too Bill. That's too Bill Cosby. But now that's a Bill Cosby. Go sizzle, zazzle. You want to go zazz, 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 zazz. Bing, bang, boom. And then right there, man, you see, I don't know if you could get up close there, but you can see those salt crystals coming in there. And they're just going to slowly sizzle away in the grease that's on there. Don't be afraid to over-season. Those look like some good races right there. <laughs> I mean, the best racist is a completely Crusty dead. On the, outside. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the best racist is a completely dead and fried racist, in my opinion. So yes, if you are looking for a proper racist, this is what you want. Not sure I'd want one inside me though, but we're gonna put these inside me. I'm gonna chew first. Okay. Uh, Get a little grease on those. A little greasy grease. Yeah, just get them. Because like I said, like one, there's two, or rather there's three big secrets to the Brooklyn Bowl Fried Chicken. One is the matzo meal as the breading. Two is the egg whites only as the egg wash. And then three is that all your seasonings going right on at the end. Oh, Let's get a zazz. third zazz hey going, zazz! And then you're gonna, Where's you got, zazz? you got the grease. That's just gonna take all of that dry herb and that salt, that seasoning is just gonna go on there, and it's just gonna melt into the skin of the chicken. Oh, it's gonna be so good. And actually, you know what I'm gonna do here for the people, in case anyone's wondering, I'm gonna take a piece off here. Going. How's my fryer temp doing? Okay, we're gonna bring you back up to 375. So we got ourselves a nice thigh here. We're gonna cut in here to the bone, and if you can see there, oh. you're cooked down to the bone. The meat is cooked through. There's no pink coming out. Any juices that are flowing out are clear, and there is so much juice coming out of that chicken right now that it is burning!
licking my hands. <laughs> and it is just delicious. We're going to cut off a piece here. And you're just going to see that dark meat cooked through. You got that fried chicken goodness on the top there. Oh, finally, some good fucking food. <laughs> I feel like it seems like really self-serving to sit here and talk about how dank this chicken is right now because I just made it, but God fucking damn it. I'm dank so ass chicken. fucking ready. I don't want it. Mm. In fact, eat my Starburst. I don't, I don't want to talk in my mouthful. <laughs> Nick's never had my fried chicken before. Nick's never had my imitation Brooklyn Bowl fried chicken before. So we're going to go to the Nick cam. And we're going to have Nick try a piece of this thigh meat right here. This is a very strange way to eat fried chicken, I know right now, but I just don't know how else to feed someone else a piece of fried chicken. Oh, yeah, there you go. Oh, there you go. There you go. There you go. Oh, yeah. Guys. Guys. Dude. This is it. I just brought the ball back right there. I just the ball back there. Oh, my God. This is it. And then we're going to do the honey and then the toast. Guys. He did it. Ah, oh, look at that. It's so good. It's so good. I'm, tell I'm telling you, like, for anyone out there, I'd imagine we're going to, we'll go back and we'll we'll edit this stream to cut it into, like, a half-hour cooking video. Okay. So you can reference it later. But if you've ever had Brooklyn Bulls fried chicken before, and you, if you follow this recipe, and you fuck it up a little bit the way that I do... You're going to have Brooklyn Bowls chicken in your home. Pete Shapiro, if you're watching, I'm sorry. Please book my bands to play your venue, and I will stop. There we go. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Cease and desist. Book our band. <laughs> so he's just sent me a C and D. I'm going to send him a... The fucking EPK. <laughs> it's, it's a TCB, baby. <laughs> mm. Okay. All right, guys. We're, we're going to prep up. For our last spoink, our last spoink. Is everyone ready for the last spoink? Oh, I am so ready for a spoink. Spoink is incoming. All right, guys, the final spoink of the evening. I like to dedicate this spoink to oh, what was that guy's name that came up with the spoink? Oh, access deny. Access deny for the Steve Rep live from the galley episode one official catchphrase spoink. And this is the final spoink. Everyone waits in anticipation. The basket lift. Here comes the drop. Oh. This song ended at just the perfect point for that. Too. <laughs> what time we got? We got 6.15. So at 6... Ah, uh, so this is just legs. So at 6.21, I'll check on those. I'm going to... Oh, my God. I have to eat this chicken. Bang, er, rang. This is it. That broken bowl chicken. Come back Wednesday, I'll be singing songs and not eating in front of you. Um, thanks so much for joining us for our first episode. It was very cool to have so many people hanging out and chatting. We will bring the full band shows back very soon. Alright, looks like looks like chat must be eating or something because <laughs> it looks like looks like they are very quiet. But so we'll just say thank you again. Uh, and uh, we hope to see you next time. Uh, we'll post the recipe at least uh, a week or two in advance, so if you do want to cook with, with Steve that you can do that. And I uh, hope you had a had a great time tonight. Thank you guys so much. Thank uh, you everyone for joining. Enjoy your chicken. Enjoy 
Yo. Chicken.